Hi, and welcome to a flight stream demo video brought to you by Door Corporation. In this video, we'll be talking about fixing meshes in flight stream. Here we have the Grumman AA-1 Yankee, and we are using this because the cab was not necessarily as clean as the PA-24 example file provided with your installation. So if we start out by going to topology, and we go click this, we can see that the free edges are actually highlighted, and in this case, we see a major free edge. And I say major because we have a misalignment of most all the vertices between these two sections or patches. So one of the best ways we can try to fix that to start out with is by selecting curves using the edge selection tool. Now that we have that selected, we would right click that option will pop up to mark curve pairs neighbors. After doing that, we can select merge all perimeters and we can see that those are all matched up. So we've gotten rid of the free edges there. We have vertex alignment. Now this might not be optimal, so you might have to go ahead and remesh using the trimmed measure or go through and manually mesh in geometry to fix small sections that you might not like. However, handling this in CAD is great and it's, it's the preferable workflow so that way we can go ahead and re-export the CAD to geometry every time with that fix so we don't have to manually do it. So now we can go ahead, expand the CAD tree, right click, convert to geometry, and after that we can go over to the geometry tab and then look at topology there as well. Here we have a couple things. So first, we have the degenerate phase count, which is awfully high. In this case, we actually are seeing an artifact of the NX export in which this little sheet here was actually carried over. However, looking over here, I also noticed that we have a degenerate phase here as it's been highlighted. So I'll, I'll discuss this in a second, but let's go ahead and delete all the degenerate faces first off because we verified that they're non-critical to the geometry of this model. Let's go in closer though. It looks like there's some other things going on. So if I make this a local reference point, now I can rotate this, and so we see that there's there's that face kind of protruding, and it's coming out of that surface, and that makes it kind of discontinuous. So given the shading, I can tell that this is actually a face, and I'm going to go ahead and delete this because I want to close this up. So now that I have this face freed, I'm going to go ahead and use the edge selection tool, select the edge of that face, split the edge using the split edge tool. Now I have a vertex in the middle there. So I'm going to actually click the vertex there, click the vertex there, and then I will have vertex alignment options. So uh, merge selected vertices, the first selected vertex, or merge selected vertices by averaging. In this case, I'm going to use the merge selected vertices by averaging option because I think that's going to be the best decision to keep a continuous surface in my geometry. Clicking that, now we can see we update and we have 66 free edges. So we've reduced our free edge count by just a tad. Now the reason why our free edge count is so low and this actually hasn't been highlighted around the perimeter curve for XZ. We have this body here that we've taken over from CAD, which is based on how we actually built our model within the NX environment. So I'm going to actually delete this. That'll free that up. So when I go to topology, I'll be able to see that curve highlighted. Now I'm at 255. There we go. Okay, so we still have some more free edges that we would like to take care of. And it's not necessary that you take care of every free edge, but sometimes free edges are an indication of problems with your geometry. So let's go ahead and look at a different trick. Over here under controls, we can see this option that says vertex merge tolerance. So right here, for instance, we have a vertex misalignment. And if I go in here with this uh, vertex selection tool, I can try to select them, but it's, it's kind of difficult. There are a couple ways we can do that, but the first is going to use this option. So right here, I'll change this say to 1e e and negative fifth. Clicking that, now we can look at our free edge count. Was it 255? If we can update, we got 213. And that is one of the simplest options for merging vertices that are almost right on top of each other but the tessellation didn't quite make it. So that way we can help that out by changing that tolerance and then reducing our free edge count. Now it's not gonna work for everything, but in this case, it actually cleared up most of the problem areas. However, let's go over here to front where I noticed that the spinner actually has a little bit of an issue. So I'll make this a local reference so I can go ahead and rotate that. So I see that this face is actually just open. This is creating an opening between these two surfaces and that's not good for my solution. So I'm going to go ahead and actually merge these two so that way I can have a continuous sheet or at least a joint sheet and then that would be better for our solver. I'm going to select this one first and this one second and I'm actually going to use this merge selected vertices for selected vertex. This way we can do a little bit of defuturing and then create a joint surface. So in that case that directional vertex merging was actually the best option for my geometry. Back over here we can update, see it drop by two and there we go. So at this point, we've gotten rid of some of our degenerate overlapping faces. We've also gotten rid of some of the free edges in this model. But if we see, there's some that weren't handled by the merge vertex tolerance option. So right here, we might have to do some more manual meshing. 
come in here, I'll make this as a reference, I'll make things a little bit easier. And we can see that there's a gap actually right here. Let's see what we can do to fix this. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and delete a couple of these faces. I'm gonna go ahead and select this first, merge this down. We reduced the free S count, now that's merged out. Now, since I don't like any of these sections here, I could actually do a couple different things. I can go in here and use the last selection. Say I wanted to get rid of all of those. Delete. Let's see how we can actually repair that. By selecting any of these edges, we can actually have this option pop up, select edges by path. Now, under topology open, we can actually du double check to see whether or not this is a closed hole. So in this case, it is. So this, so this select edges by path option will actually work for us. Once more. And then we have this other option pop up once we have that hole selected. In this case, fill all marked by edges. And there we go, it's retesselated the same way. But say we didn't like that, or we wanted to do it a different way. We can go in here and delete. Then we can actually manually rebuild this if we wanted to. By selecting edges that are neighboring, or in this case, they don't have to be neighboring, we see both times that this connect edges option shows up. So in this case, I'll demonstrate how we can do that with a common vertex. But also we can actually fill this up by selecting these two. And now we have faces created. Now this is a less optimal method of doing that in this case because we have a vertex in the middle of this edge and we don't want that to happen. But after selecting complete, then we can go ahead and fill it once more using the auto fill hole. And there we go. Now say that one of these edges actually came through like this. And this happens sometimes based on the directionality of your fill hole. Say it came through like this. And now we have it linked up with this, but it's not the same direction as it was any of the neighboring faces. Can actually select that edge and use this swap edges option and that might be something that we want to do might not in this case however just to demonstrate some of the manual tools and manual meshing within flystream for your model now any combination of these might be required and the order of them is always going to be taking care of things in cad then coming over to geometry to do the manual things and that's just simply because the manual things aren't reproducible when you export from cad to geometry